long story. <laughs> this shape became involved in my artwork in wall number 78. This is 86. In 78, I had a Polaroid camera that had black and white film. And the Polaroid camera only had so many photographs in its shell. Once you take a picture, you pull it out, and pretty soon I was down to the last picture of a show. I was taking of big paintings side by side and I was running out of film. It was my own show in the art school. And meanwhile, the big painting was photographed. I pulled out the Polaroid and gelatin from the negative, the black and white negative was still not forming correctly. And when I peeled it apart, oh, it didn't get fully composed in the picture. And all there was was this jelly-like shape of chemical on one side of the image of the painting. And when I put the two Polaroids together, one good Polaroid and one of the other painting with a mark in it, I put them together to form a painting. And that became painting number 178, what neck painting 78. And 78 had the blue wave where that mistake was. The huge blue wave. And that gave the feel of Sisyphus climbing up. And it also gave the feeling of the overwhelming wave of the Vietnam War and the whole wave of war and the whole wave in the South China Sea. When I went back to Vietnam in 1994 with the artists and we saw our own show of Americans and Vietnamese look at the war in Hanoi and we went on the trip to China Beach and in the beach I got pulled out in a riptide and my good friend from CBS, Larry Pomeroy, tried to help me as I was drifting out to sea. I asked him, hey, Larry, come out. I'm drifting away. I don't touch the bottom. And he said, I'll get the lifeguards. And I trusted him because he was a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> if it was some other person, I wouldn't trust him to say that we're going to get someone. Anyways, he got these people, this lifeguard, who swam up and face to face, I thought it was a vehicle. He grabbed me and helped me in the shore. Meanwhile, long story short, that wave in the South China Sea, the wave of the overwhelming Vietnam forces, the wave, the hill of Sisyphus climbing, and that all became incorporated in 178. By the time I came to this painting and working with it as a calculation, the wave was still in the previous work. And so that was this shape. And other shapes in the painting led me to organize the rectangle. Uh, other shapes in the Polaroid helped me organize the rectangle. This tape has got colors in it because it was used in the painting and it had been colored by paint that color and I depicted that, which depicts my own process in the studio. But meanwhile, this became the positive blue shape of wall 78. And now I made it into the black with night, morning, Viet Cong. I made that color symbolically, but this became the hill that I put the running man or the man pushing the stone up the hill or the soldier climbing a hill. 
the same image was made into a uh, stencil and also I could use a stencil cut out as a positive block out or the hole as a stencil hole. And meanwhile, the block out and the hole were used all over this zone of the painting and it became a hill fight in Vietnam. And my Marine friends in Vietnam were describing how they took the hills. And one of the friends was a guy named Ned Broderick, who is in Life Magazine with Larry Burroughs' photograph of that huge Life Magazine double spread out. And Ned Broderick's in there with his back against the wall when these people are in a resting area during a battle, a big battle in the ears, right? And meanwhile, the Marines had some, it might not have been Vietnam, but anyways, the point is that this attitude for a hill fight and the confusion, and who got the hill is the first guy on top of the hill. And if someone was there before, if you could scare him off, kill him, scare him off somehow, get rid of him, then you've got the hill. And it was a very interesting concept of mine that was developed during the time of making this painting. And so here's the battle for the hill, and it's still like a motion of indecision, who's ever alive to make one that doesn't get killed doing one, it's all in there. The whole, the whole chaos of Vietnam is in this painting. And so I, it, the jungle, here's some death said in here. Yeah, the skulls. And these are death heads, which are memento mori, the symbol of the transience of life and the certainty of death. It's a 16th century theme in art history. But what I had for the memento mori skull was also this head on the stake in the villages. When I left Vietnam in 1963 of August, I had been able to receive some information that there were 4,449 4, heads on stakes in the villages so far during the terrorist campaign in the Buddha countryside of the Delta. And meanwhile, the head on the stake was a village chief the visitation in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, would be asking for his toughest young adult, uh, boys to get recruited. They were asking for doors to sleep on. They were asking for rice. They were asking for tax. And they were asking for uh, hiding under their huts. And if the village chief did not comply, off would come the head and on a bamboo spike, at the well of the village in the morning, all the women would come to get water and their chief head, chief's head would be on stake. And that was the method of terrorism I knew about and was briefed about before we went to Vietnam. Some very interesting briefings from Washington DC about what was going on. Meanwhile, the head on the stake is a symbol in my art all the time. And here it is too. Here's the stake, here's the head. But these are in the painting too. So everything about Vietnam is in here. And the overwhelming and the, the chaos and the Sisyphus, the, the never getting it done. Once the stones roll up the hill, it comes back down for eternity. It's the same symbol also for painting which I have adapted, is the act of painting is like the myth of Sisyphus, that you get it up to the top and then it comes down. You start it all over again. It's never ended. That's why this whole show is just a form, my form, you know, of the existence. And when I'm dead, that's all there's left, the form. Form is very meaningful and it comes from everything that's under you, from your heritage or whatever, and your acquaintances and your concepts of life. So it's all in the painting.